Welcome to season two of the Community Clash League by Heroes Hearth. My name is Not Paradox, and I'll be hosting this awesome event. Here with me is the man with the four foot beard, the master caster, Bahamut. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for the kind words. What a, what an introduction that I'm getting right? here. I'm so excited. We're season two. It's it's happening. We're live. We're here. But I think people want to jump into this immediately and know who's actually playing tonight because oh yeah, there's there's a whole slew of amazing players. We're going to be starting out by seeing on the left hand side here, not safe for work, work from home with Russ, Turk, Selenity, Coffee, and Kyberries. If anyone doesn't know who Russ is, you know, casual like top GM tank player for heroes for consistent seasons, just running it down with the rest of this team. Like I'm super excited about this team overall, but we've got three other amazing teams here. Paradox. Oh yeah. I mean, Russ is definitely one that uh, if you don't watch the GM leaderboards, he's almost always in the top 10 every single season dominates on tank, but we can't just sell all the other teams short. We've got big ding energy with Jazzy. We've got Laura, Mockery, Vipey, and Alicia. A lot of familiar faces and names from the previous uh, season and people that did very, very well previously. So these are going to be a ton of fun to watch big ding energy. Yeah, I feel like I can hear Alora already screaming from top lane on Ragnaros, right? Fr from just this one screen here. But following that up, we do have Little Rubies, where we're going to have uh, uh, Lashes, Liam, Trixler, Kagiri, and Lakefu. And, I mean, with Deckard Kane getting buffed and Lakefu being so strong on Deckard Kane last season, how can you blame them for just naming it after Blake Fu essentially here. Oh yeah, completely. It's going to be terrifying, not to mention that she's back on the team with Liam again. And between those two, they were undefeated for pretty much the first three weeks last time. And so it will be crazy to see them uh, on the same team again as well. This time they've got Trixler, Lashes, and Kagiri. But let's not forget about the, this last team, the Pendanoms. We've got Tim from Hero of Fitness. We've got Kyle Ferguson. Mune is back again. Tatsukichu and Miss Paws. And I mean, you've mentioned Tatsuki Chu before as being the dark horse, so I'm sure you're excited to see what she brings this season. Oh, I'm I'm so excited about this. But speaking of season, I know there's also been questions of the format mm -hmm. for the season. How are we going to be? What games are we going to be getting? How is this all going to culminate after multiple weeks? Well, we have that breakdown for you right here. We have three weeks of regulation play, as we'll call it, or round robin format, where everyone plays each other, vying for points. Those points will get them seeding towards the playoffs, and that playoffs will be a page playoff bracket. If you're not familiar with this, we can actually show you exactly what that'll look like, that page playoff bracket. And if, so you can see here, you've got an upper part and a lower part, and that lower page, if you're, if you're in that lower seeding, you're tournament life the entire time. You don't have that extra life where you can fall into the lower page and potentially win it back through. No, if you're out, you're out. And... This is going to make things a little more spicy as we progress throughout the season here for the first three weeks of regulation play. Those That page playoff will start off in week four, continuing into week five and six. But Paradox, I'm sure these players aren't here just to play for you know Nexus points. There, there, there's got to be something else in the line. Yeah, I mean, there's bragging rights, but there's so much more than bragging rights, right? There is a prize pool that is awesome. Uh, so this prize pool has a flat prize pool starting off with... First place getting 500, second getting 400, third getting 300, fourth getting 200. And during this entire event, all of the money that you guys donate is going to go to keeping this event running. 60% of that is going to increase that prize pool. So that means that first place will likely be getting more than $500. So the more you guys can help, the better. But I also want to just talk a little bit about the sponsor that we have that's also helped us to be able to run this awesome event. And this season, that is Juked.gg. Juked.gg is an awesome website with a collection of all of your favorite esports. You can follow different games, teams, players, while also checking out uh, point of view streams from many of your favorite players. Check them out at Juked.gg. All righty. And well, with that, we have everything set up for game number one here. And I always like to update everyone at home and tell them how we got here. Because game one number one will be on Infernal Shrines. We did have the coin flip won by Little Rubies opting mm -hmm. for first pick priority. They banned out Sky Temple and Cursed Hollow. Garden of Terror and Hanamura Temple were banned out by the members of Not Safe for Work, Work from Home. And so Infernal Shrines will be chosen by them as uh, we can kind of get into this here in just a second. What are your thoughts on Infernal Shrines as a map for, for this game number one? 
So Infernal Shrines is always one of my favorites because it just has the largest roster pool of pretty much any other map. Soul Lane is rather important as well as you need AoE damage. You need single target damage. You still get a lot of opportunities for team fights, but the, the objectives are relatively timed because it only lasts until one team gets 40 of that objective, which makes it to where you have a lot of things, a lot of heroes that, that want shorter fights. You've got a lot of heroes that want longer fights, and it's all about just playing it out. There's a ton of team comps that work. So it's definitely my favorite map just because such a wide amount of team comps and roster is available for this map. You and I were actually talking a little bit about this before we got into the game here because we knew Infernal Shrines would be the first map and we you, you were saying exactly that and I was sitting there, I was like, yeah, you could get things like Uther main tank with Ana as a healer and then Kerrigan diving in and that's usually like a big blow-up composition that I've seen a lot of teams play within the high uh, high tier realms as well as just even kind mm -hmm. of the middle of the ground as well. But it's going to be a Deathwing and a Zul already being banned out. Zul, really strong within Wave Clear. Deathwing has a lot of just good aggression, some poke. He's got great utility overall and um, sometimes can be undervalued or at least overlooked in a sense where people are just like, oh, we'll just get Curse Bullet and deal with it. And it's like, well, this isn't really enough because, well, you also have to land the Curse Bullet. But anything else that stands out to you ban-wise when we go to Infernal Shrines outside of well just you know, Russ's, some of the things Russ's, is, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's not just like that. These are strong meta picks. Azul certainly is the Deathwing is, but we also see a lot, a lot of targets targets coming out already, mm -hmm. right? We have the URL to get rid of Liam's URL, but you got to remember what Turk won with the last season, which was True. Deathwing. So they're getting rid of almost all of his target bands with the exception of Zul. Uh, and they're really good target bands, but that still leaves Garrosh available for Russ. And Russ has one of the most brawlery Garrosh's I've ever seen. But we're starting off with a Kagiri, or sorry, with Kagiri doing a Sylvanas pick, which I think is a really solid first pick. That's actually a strong one for them as well. I know in the ranked win North America uh, show earlier today on this channel, we actually saw Kagiri playing Sylvanas, and I think it's actually really, really strong. A Deckard Kane and a Joanna, though, on the right hand side. Strong tank overall, really good within the rotations between lanes. Deckard Kane, we talked about it slightly. I mean, Ruby value is so insanely powerful here so i i'm excited like basically you, you can throw out a ruby every herodric cube because ruby is a 10 second cooldown herodric cube is a 12 mm -hmm. second cooldown at 20 with perfect gems that's a six second cooldown in herodric cube five seconds on the emerald and they'll have it sorry i had to stop mid-sentence they're gonna take alex Straza into a deckard i just want to like my point aside like yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's a six second you know herodric cube with with ruby on it every time but like Decker Kane's considered a counter to Alex Straza with Emerald at level seven. This is interesting to me here, Pyrodox. It is. I mean, Emerald can be really good into Alex Straza. I think that the challenging part about Alex Straza is if you use your abilities correctly, then if you throw out Emerald, you're only actually going to block out the first heal. Because what happens with Alex Straza is you're going to drop down a W, a Q, a trait, a W, a Q, and so your Emerald's really only going to be blocking the first W and Q, which is only really a small portion of healing compared to that second one, which mm -hmm. that second W Q is going to be so much more, and you won't have it for when they do ults or when you're trying to pick off specific people. So it comes down to be a bit of a skill matchup. Now, both of these healer players are very good. We've seen Kyberries on Deckard, <laughs> and we've seen Lake Fu on Alex Straza. There goes the Turks uh, Vikings, this little sneaky... Last one I, thrown in there. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to jinx it. I was really hoping for some Vikings here. It's not a common Vikings map, but Turk is not a common here as the Storm players. So, like, it's one of those things that, like, it definitely could have been Vikings, and, and they're, they're going to respect it. But they'll grab a Leork, great wave clear, good double soak, mm -hmm. good shrine clear, especially with the Neil Peasants at level four being able to clear minions, mercenaries, and monsters with the uh, uh, increased damage on the Skelta Swing. Orphea... I think she's really strong in Infernal Shrines and is massively undervalued because much like Mephisto gets value here where people group up and you can get a lot of, uh, you know, extra damage in there with, you know, the Shadow Waltz building her uh, trait as well as the uh, the Chomp and the uh, Mind Devourer. That's just, there's so much like poke potential, AoE damage from her and mobility as well. I really like that. But a Garrosh Zarya, mm -hmm. a lot of good shielding. This is, I'll be honest here, the <laughs> members of Little Rubies have a very strong core draft and this is going to be difficult to kill. Oh, yeah. And and not only is it going to be difficult to kill, we've got Garrosh and Zarya. So Zarya is going to be giving 50% movement speed to Garrosh. He's going to mm -hmm. just fly right in. And most likely he's going to try to grab either Orphea or Deckard or 
probably <gasps> even copies Keldazad. And yeah. if he's unstoppable when he's going in and throwing Keldazad, this is going to be terrifying. This means that Russ needs to be on it and stay as close to Garrosh as he possibly can. So he's always the one taking the throw, pops his trait, pops W, pulls everyone in, locks him down, and then his team can throw everything at their team once he throws that Joanna in. So it's all going to come down once again to another skill matchup. Trixler and Russ playing this back and forth on who's going to be able to land this out just a little bit better. But overall, this is going to be a really, really fun game to watch. So much could go on in this game. I love these two drafts, but really quickly, because we, you know, we talked about this earlier, the prize pool is already increasing. Selexia with 690 bits. Thank you so oh, much. Wow. Angry Dwarf with the 3000 bits. Thank you very, very much. Maddie B with the 200 bits, as well as 8-Bit Dame with the, if I'm reading this correct, 10,000 bits? Hello? Yeah, I believe that is 10,000 bits right there. That is crazy. We also have a donation of $10 from an Ashen Moor, so thank you for that as well. Um, I, that is, I mean, this is awesome, guys. Any sort of support you guys can do keeps this event running not only smooth, but allows us to bring in these awesome community members every time and make sure that they have that incentive. Uh, but with that being said, I would like to introduce... Little Rubies, over on the left side, blue team, we have Trixler playing Garrosh. We've got Kagiri on Sylvanas. We've got Lashes playing Zarya, Lake Fu on Alex Straza, and we've got Liam on Thrall. And on the right-hand side, we got the members of not safe for works <laughs> from home i oh i knew i was gonna have trouble with this one but either way nsf which will be the short version is gonna be kyberry is on the deckard cane turk is going to be on the leoric russ will be on that joanna we see selenity on the orphea and coffee on the kale Thuzad. this is double mage which we rarely get to see like not a lot of teams opt for double mage but yeah, I mean, the, the thing about double mages, I think there was a few seasons in there where each tank either got physical armor or spell armor. And the downside about that was that double mage was very bad because all you need to do is bring like a Tyrael or a Nubrock in and it was just ruined. They kind of equalized it so each tank could kind of go into anything. And double mage now only has, it has a different downside. And that downside is that it's generally more burst and not very good for sustained damage. But Orphea is one of those that can actually be kind of that sustain that most teams might need. And that's the benefit is you can run something like a Kel'Thuzad for burst and Orphea can burst, but Orphea can also do that sustain. So the downside about double mage has been mitigated just a little bit. There are still downsides to it, but it has been mitigated a little bit. Well, with that, we'll see if that is going to be enough for them to be able to win this game over or if it's just going to be a steamroll by the members of Little Rubies. We are going to go into our standard core rotations from mid to bottom, making sure you're getting as much experience as possible. But this is going to be a quick tamp time on the right hand side. You want to grab that at the one minute mark. So since they lagged behind in the Little Rubies, this will be not safe for work. Work from home invading onto the camp. Rust should be able to step up on this point. Trixler trying to anchor here as well on this Garrosh. Healing Circle goes down the ground from the Oxtraza. Coffee's going to be popping up with some chains from Kael'thuzad. Russ actually goes over the wall on the far side. Going to take some armor reduction. Actually, a whole lot of damage under them. They can't re-engage. Kagiri could sniff this out, but they don't end up going for it here, Paradox. It is kind of unusual. They completely just forgot about him because it, it is one of those things where it's like, yeah, he could hide, but he can't really hide that much. Uh, he, he only really has three or four bushes that he can hide in, and they could send one or two people in there to go for it. They decided it's just not worth their time, though. Uh, kills in this level are not really worth that much. In fact, at this level, uh, one wave of soak is still worth about one and a half kills. So they're like, you know what? Let's not waste time worrying about one kill. Let's focus on soaking and keep it going. And that's exactly what they do. They go to camps, make sure that they have these camps available for the objective that's going to be spawning in the middle, which will be a mortar shrine. That scales really well, so the Mortar Shrine's not going to be too scary this early, but an objective is an objective, right? Mortar Punisher, like, it's... It it can slap pretty hard, but it, yeah, I agree. It doesn't really siege too well. Like, it, it definitely can jump on someone and really pummel them with damage, but even then, it's also the first Punisher of the game, so... This is by far the weakest Punisher and the weakest one of... Yeah, it's, it's, it's double... It's double not so good. So we've actually seen teams in those situations where they're like, well, this Punisher won't get us that much value. We could potentially just walk through a different lane and, and get value with that. But Trixler doing a great job body blocking Coffee almost going down as Russ and 
Rust tries to kind of control that fight, but it doesn't work out for them. They did get some camp pressure in the top lane. Turk really low as well as Vesper's just going to be pushing this wave up, but not pushing too hard, making sure they're also up here for the experience to poke Turk as well. Maybe even get that early kill onto the Leoric. The one thing I want to also point out is it's a killless game. We are just about before level seven. So this is, oh my God, Coffee, by the way, is just popping up on these stacks from Kel'Thuzad, but will they end up going down to Vesper? They do find the kill on the side of Little Ruby's first blood over to that blue team. Alex Drowsa does pop the Dragon Queen form. Lake Food kind of zoning and putting out some healing for the friendly team, also using that breath as an AOE clear. But this should be first objective over to the side of Little Rubies. It, it definitely should be. I mean, there's really no way to, to get around it. Now, the, the one benefit, though, is again, this first objective is not too strong. And we are still waiting on those stacks coming out from Kel'Thuzad. He's currently at 10 out of the 30 before he gets that... that I mean, 5 more and he gets his crystal. But yes. 20 more and he gets 75% increased damage, which is going to be key if he wants to try to combo people. And we've seen Coffee do a lot of combos. He loves those combo mages. Yeah, the, the spell power increase from Kel'Thuzad is just insane in these moments. Um, but right now, we actually have Little Ruby sieging in with three members, just trying to get that front gate down. Thrall still in top lane, making sure they're soaking up against Turk. And in bottom lane, we actually had Lashes continuing to soak down here on Zarya. And I'll, I'll be honest, so far, it's really difficult to kind of get into this enemy team. I, not safe for work from home. Oh, maybe getting Ooh. caught in the bush, but it's Russ, it's Russ who face-checked that bush. Um, little tip for anyone in chat, your tank should be face-checking the bushes, not not your uh, Decker Kane, which was really, really smart of them right there as Trickster pops the Indomitable. They're able to get out. And uh, just to update everyone on stacks really quickly, we have five out of the 15 for the Warbreaker for the Garrosh. We have five out of the 20 for the Give Me 20 on the Zarya, 11 out of the 30 on the Master of the Cold Dark for the Kale Thuzad. No stack on the Subdue yet from the Joanna. She needs to hit four heroes for that to get uh, stacked. But still, you have the 80% slow as long as you're hitting two enemy heroes, which even then, that's just, that baseline is such an impactful talent for chase potential, maybe even setting up coffee to be able to get easier chains. And that, that honestly is going to be a really, really good option for them to go with. Uh, we do have some interesting talents, um, but I do I do really like them. I was watching uh, Kyberry's stream, actually, and she was running this build on Deckard, and she was just kind of laughing at the amount of like damage reduction and amount of healing that their tanks were able yep. to bring with all those rubies. So we see a ton of rubies available. Russ gets a good chunk of healing, but the Selenity uh, doing her best to try to get out. Trixler's just slowly walking himself up. Uh, but again, I mean, it's still a very low kill game, and the experience difference between these teams is very small, despite that they have that um, that first objective and the the first kill. They're only up by maybe half a level, and once they, this other wave gets cleared up, that's going to drop even further. Yeah, the uh, the one heroic kill that we saw very early in the game is only yielding them 552 experience. And that's a slight bit, but the majority of the experience is actually coming out from mercenaries. They have a they have a, a gain of 300 from those mercenary camps that they've gotten earlier. So a little bit of that experience gain coming in from there, but we will see tens relatively uh, close together. I want to point out something because I'm looking at these and I was like, all right, you know, Warlord's Challenge, Wailing Arrow, Graviton Surge. <laughs> not 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 the not the standard we see, but. I kind of like it. Graviton Surge into Wailing Arrow. You can get for the upgrade at level 20 for the the silence on top of the Graviton Surge as well. So you could you could have a silence on top of it. Like, there's so many silence options. So, and then technically a taunt, Warlord Challenge, is a silence as well. <laughs> well, and, and the thing that's even better about this. So this is why whenever I see a, a Garrosh Zarya and I see the other ult, I understand the reason they take it. It instantly mm -hmm. guarantees that you win any camp. It also makes to where if you're ever chasing, you can block out their exit because they always need to walk through the walls. So mm -hmm. you can block out their exit. Not to mention, its damage gets beefed up by the amount of energy you have. So it's a great ultimate ability while also having a low cooldown. But what always blows my mind is Taunt lasts long enough to land Graviton. Yep. You can just give speed to Garrosh. Garrosh runs in, Taunt, you Graviton, and everyone's locked together for anyone to throw whatever they want to. And I, it always kind of blew my mind that they didn't run with that because it's such a strong combo. Yeah, it's a two second silence, you know, everyone's attacking them. So we'll see if that happens here. The Shrine's gonna be popping off. Lash is taking a lot of damage. Graviton Surge just come out. It's gonna be pulling one in as Rust did pop the Iron Skin. We do see Turk going down. They'll be able to cheat death. That's going to be the uh, Joanna going down as well. Kyberry puts a couple members to sleep. That will be Vesper though. I think getting hit with one of the Skeletal Defenders wakes up and tries to chase him further. Alex Straza will be in the cleansing form. Cleansing 
Cleansing Flame for him as they get the snipe onto Coffee Land back down. And we're looking like a second uh, Punisher for the side of Little Rubies. And I think we see Liam just clearing out mid lane. Leoric is back, but top lane does have Shaman Camps in that one as well. Oh, definitely. And this is going to be a really powerful one for this time. Uh, Frozen Punisher in the mid game is very good because it turns off structures and allows your team to siege. So before the Punishers really get scaled hard, this allows your team to do a lot of work, especially with these no new turret changes. Doing something like this, being able to turn off these new powerful turrets allows you to siege very hard in these lanes. So this is a really good one to get right about at this time. Punisher pushes in through bottom lane. It does lock down the towers for, I believe, like 2.5 seconds, which allows them to siege a little more aggressive. Punisher gets a triple stun off that jump. Not gonna have the enemy team stepping up onto that one. We do see the toss onto the Turk, and this is more or less a disengaged toss. They don't... They really don't want to fight here, but you see the subdue value coming in. Graviton Surge will pull a couple members... Excuse me, pull a couple members in. And Trixler, I don't know if you're gonna make it out of here alive, bud, and they're gonna find a nice triple kill on the side of... Not safe from for work from home. <laughs> <laughs> the names this time are amazing. That's actually I one of my just favorite keep names it. right there because it's just I it's just so funny. Um, it is, but at yeah. the same time, it's like I love the icons that they all have as well. And no, you guys no. haven't like really looked at the icons. The icons are amazing for all of these teams. They're just so good. Um, but I do like this comeback that not safe for work from home did because it. It was just a really quick one that got them back into the game relatively easily. Yes, they lost a fort, but they came back and experienced or even on experience again, and they are getting stacked up. We finally have that, that glacial spike that's available, and we're starting to close in on that extra 75% damage. It shouldn't take too long. We've got a little bit of an ambush happening right here. They are going for a lot of damage, but look at Trickster. He just walks up, taunts a few people. Uh, they go for a lot of extra damage. Trickster is getting super low, though. So despite that, Alex Charles is able to keep him alive. Graviton goes out, locking in both Rust and Salinity, but they're able to stay alive through the Ruby and the extra healing that Kyberry is able to bring out. Rust does go down. That's also Orphea being taken down. Coffee's going to be taken down. And now this is looking like a really, really rough fight for not safe for work from home. And it's going to just go in favor of uh, Little Rubies. But it is one of those weird fights outside of an objective where it's like, we killed three, we're not really 16. We can't just like close out the game here. What can we do to take these three kills that we got and gain more value out of it? Camps. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, like map pressure, but realistically, like to answer to, to answer your question, they got three kills. The best thing you can do is push out the lanes. You know the enemy team's gonna play defensive. You know you can see Decker Kane and uh, uh, Leork in top lane clearing. So why not push out your lanes? Maybe even press into mid lane a little hard. Next Punisher will be top lane is going to be Arcane. But until then, it's just going to be pushing in the enemy team, finding that 16 talent here and keeping the momentum up on the side of Little Rubies. They're doing an amazing job of finding these like little these little wins and just exploiting them to just keep gaining. And that's why we're seeing almost a 16 talent tier lead over and in favor for the members of Little Rubies in here in just a second. Um, Punisher timing I didn't look at, but we're probably looking at something, what, 13, 14 minutes into the game for our next Punisher phase, and they'll be in top lane. If they get this on the side of Little Rubies here, Paradox, they could be looking to end game. And they definitely should be trying to, because if they can close out the game or at least get a huge advantage before Kel'Thuzad gets his stacks, and before, if we look at uh, the Turk's build on Leoric right now, he's going that build that once he hits level 20, he's going to be able to be unkillable every time that he tosses March out and doing a ridiculous amount of damage. So this is the time for Little Rubies to try to close out the game early before they hit that level 20. Sure, they'll get some big things at 20 as well, but it's really the best thing that they can do to try to close out this game. So they go for a couple kills, they go to steal a camp. This is gonna be both of the Bruiser camps as well as a Siege camp pushing mid, both Bruiser camps pushing top, and this should be a free trine for them uh, if they can do it quickly. So camp through, double camp through top lane. Coffee lived with like a sliver of health in that last engagement, I just want to say. Also, I'm, I'm thinking back to season one of CCL and I'm remembering there was a game, I want to say it was Infernal Shrines where Coffee did go kill the Zod and they stacked super late. But once Coffee got those stacks, that was it. Like the game was just swapped over. Like every single team fight went over to the side of that team because he had that 75% that spell power. Currently Coffee sitting at 24 stacks out of the 30. The uh, Warlord or the Warbreaker from Garrosh is finished out from level one. Give me 20 is finished out by the Zarya. Uh, Subdue still not finished out, but hey, you, you have that 80% slow as we saw in the last engagement. Coffee gonna throw a, a few of the 
Uh, Shadow Fisher's out right there, poking and getting a little cooldown reduction. They missed the last one, so it's full cooldown. But this will be Arcane Punisher for top lane. Could they end the game with it here, Paradox? Uh, it's tricky because they're on even talent here right now. And uh, even though they do have large advantages, there's nothing really that's going to guarantee them this this uh, closing out. So I, it's going to come down to can they get a couple kills really quick? If they can get a couple kills really quick, then I would say yes, they could certainly end right here. They go for the taunt, uh, they go for the graviton, but that's Liam getting taken out almost too quickly. They can't deal with that. And now Turk is just sitting in the middle of their team, just not dying and doing a lot of damage. We still see those stacks coming out from Coffee. He's not quite at the point where he's doing a lot of damage, but they were able to hold. And because they were able to hold, this is gonna give them a really good shot at getting level 20, which is gonna be huge for them. An insanely good hold coming out from the members of not safe for work from home. And we see Selenity just pulling this Punisher over towards the core, so it takes a little easy damage. Actually, that, that worked out really well. Rarely do I see Punishers actually stick that long, but there was a wave right there that the Punisher focused on. So they actually save a little bit of health on that fort. Meanwhile, Turk in mid lane. Oh, the short Wraith Walk won't get them out of there, and they're going to go down. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. I mean, th these are the kills that they need to do something with, but unfortunately, Liam is still dead. So it's just going to be a 4v4. They can't push as just a 4v4. I mean, maybe they try to go for that fort, but if they use too many abilities on that fort, they're going to get Glacial Spiked and they're going to get dropped. So we see Turk just getting some vision, making sure that they're not making any major plays because we've seen both of these teams have been rather sneaky. They've both attempted to do these little ambushes. And once again, I mean, we see a little bit of an invade coming in. Trixler sneaking in, they grabbed an extra camp there. That's gonna be two of those camps available to push. That'll easily be able to take mid. So now it's up to them if they want to push with it or just kind of stick around and try to get that level 20s before the enemy team. This is this is such a hard spot to be in. You're on a defensive foot as a team. You have a decent. They have really good aggression on the side of not safe for work from home, but we just don't see it. Like I'm looking, I'm looking at some of the numbers right now. Like 35,000 heroic damage on Orphea, not bad. I, 24,000 on the Keltazad as well. Thrall with 43,000, but they've just been smashing a hammer into Leork this entire game. Looks like they're trying to set up for a bush party, trying to catch them into a mid rotation, but I don't think. They're going to be caught out by that one as they take the most massive rotation through their through their you know front gates of their keeps so that way they don't get even caught out within where russ is rotating through right now kind of in this midpoint i've actually seen some teams set up actually i've seen a team take recommendations from you paradox and set up right there and find picks and it's just like that's actually like that that little rotation where like where coffee is currently going through like late game picks through that lane when there's a potential like back door for a keeper or a core is devastating i've seen games end because they, they just sit in that little corridor they're like oh they'll come and clear bottom lane and then boom done we got them and we just run it down bottom so um they, they that is set for a bush party there but it's a little a little too far forward in my opinion I, yeah, that's that's the challenging part about ambushes is the biggest thing about an ambush is there's, there's two major pieces. Number one, it needs to be kind of unpredictable. And number two, you need to be in between the area where the enemies are and where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And those are the two major tricks with it. But you're also going against Russ, who's dealt with pretty much all of these ambushes. So he's going to be checking all of these bushes ahead of time. And he's got his trait ready to immediately get a giant shield in case he ends up picking the wrong bush to walk through. In this case, he even is watching, seeing where Trickster's going. Trickster was heading into that bush to go try to hide. And that would have been a great one to go into before this objective. Let's, but let's did... jump into not safe for work, work from home's comms, because we're about to get into like a 20. Like this is this is perfect time. So let's jump into their comms all the way at the bottom. Sounds good. We, we gotta get this mid wave somehow. Yeah, that'd be so great. We'll that would really They're be great. following us. Just keep running out. Just keep running out. You're okay. They're not actually. They're just peeking us out. I'm coming back. Alright, we got it. Let's run it. After this wave, I guess. Can't wait we don't got it. Up. We gotta go. Pretty fast. I think there's still not gonna go, so. Go, let's go. Go, go. Kill Thrall. Kill Thrall. Or, or Garrosh, I mean. Garrosh. Garrosh? He's dead. He's dead. Someone else. Oh my god, this fucking Maybe. silence lasts a trillion years. I got him. We got, we got many potions. Thrall? I can't even, Thrall? like, move my character, but somehow I'm doing shit, so let's go. Nice. I think Turk carried that. I'd say. 20. Oh, what did really I say? Nice. I what just need 20. Island? What the hell was that? Who does that? We, uh, we, we need to push. No, no, no. Okay. We gotta push. 
That was really, really, like, I was expecting those comms to be just like, shot calling and this and that. It was just like, I'm on this one, I'm on this one. I'm frozen, but I'm still killing people. And then look at this, they get a Punisher here, Paradox. What are we even watching? It's, I mean, again, it's that, that Leoric build. It's one of those builds where it's like, you don't, you lose every objective until you hit 20. And then right as you hit 20, you are this unkillable force that is draining everyone around you. And any amount of damage that's that's weight that's used on you is wasted on you, and that's exactly what happened. He stepped forward, he drained on everyone, and they just threw all the damage at him. He couldn't die, and even though they had their entire backline that was silenced and locked down and silenced again, it did not matter because all the damage was just wasted. And we've seen this before. Cursed Hollow last season. Turk did the same thing. They lost every single objective until he had level 20 and he just popped his ult once and was able to just walk through the enemy team. And now we have Radiating Faith, all the good stuff, the perfect gems coming out as well. They've got a lot of tools, but the Punisher was baited towards the mid top lane keep. Guild is going to try and pop off here. They do have their master, the Cold Dark Stack. Stay well and listen from Kyberries is going to buy some time. That will be the court rapidly falling. There's the Crushing Jaws. There's a Graviton Surge. Everything being used. The Punisher at 60%. Guild is on the left side of the core trying to end the game over here. The core is rapidly falling, and I think... This is going to be game number one going over to the side of not safe for work. Work from home as they turn it around at level 20. GG. Well played. That was a game. I mean, they were behind the entire game. And all it took was one fight at 20. And they were able to just roll through with that objective. And those level 20 objectives get so strong as well. So it, it was just too difficult to deal with. And that is, I mean, that's crazy. We still saw so much. Coming out from the team of Little Rubies, they, I mean, Thrall did so much damage that game. They had amazing synergy with each other. Uh, but at the end of the day, they needed to get more done when they did win those fights to close out that game before the enemies got their stacks. Because once Kaldazad got those stacks, right? Once we had uh, um, that level 20 on Leoric, it just didn't matter anymore. They just were able to do way too much uh, too quickly. So that's my biggest thing is if you're going into a team that's drafting for level 20 and you have a lead, you got to push that lead and close out the game earlier. I, I, we've been fiddling with some stuff in the background, but I just, I want to point something out here, Paradox. During that game, mm -hmm. I missed this. We had over 50% of our bits donated. And we had 510% of our donations to the players. Someone, do, like, we have $510. Wow. Sorry, who sorry, can you say it again? Dave L, thank you for the five hundred dollars. You need to get that shout out because that's insane. Thank you so much for supporting this event. That is massive. But as we all have uh we we've been fixing stuff in the background, so we're gonna take a short little break mm -hmm. here. We're gonna try and get everything fixed for game number two. We're gonna get all, all of our players set up for game number two. We'll be right back with more heroes CCL. Don't go anywhere, go get yourself a glass of water and get ready for more games. See you soon. All right, welcome back to Season 2 Community Clash League by Heroes Hearth. We are into game number two, but before that, I believe we've got a few bits and donations. Would you like to take the honors of those, Baja? Oh, as always, we have got the resubscription from Dax. Thank you so much for the four months. 200 bits from Maddie. Be, bra or be bad, excuse me. Uh, we have Zell with 100 bits as well. Uh, Tiger Skippy with 500 bits coming in. Uh, Wedgegate's going to be a uh, tier one subscription. Thank you very much. Dave L, as we said beforehand, with the $500. There was actually a, uh, a little message with that, and uh, we'll leave that to uh, to just the mystery that that message is. <laughs> Battle Kid's going to be donating a 500 bits, and Workhorse gifted five tier one subs. Thank you so much, Workhorse, you wonderful human being. But we are getting everyone back into lobby here. We're getting ready. Hopefully we've gotten th through all of the, the little bits that we wanted to fix on our little break right there but going into this next game we are going to be heading to tomb of the spider queen so that means that team one which is going to be our little rubies opted for first pick as the losing team mm -hmm. and that'll be another map pick coming out from the side of not safe for work from home i think i'm actually getting the hang of it finally i'm not gonna lie oh yeah i hope by the <laughs> end of this we'll have the, these names down perfectly without any mistakes because if not mm -hmm. it's gonna be a little wild but uh that's all right yeah tomb of the spider queen's always a fun one it's one that gets picked up a lot in these competitive type games just because it's a map that gives you a lot of opportunities as far as uh it it gives both teams a a, a 
time to like do something. Even if you lose the objective, you could still be holding on enough to just quickly win the objective right over. Um, while a lot of objectives, like say in uh, all track, if you mm -hmm. lose that objective, whatever progress you had is gone. But in, in Tomb of the Spider Queen, you get to hold on to the progress of that objective onto the next objective, which allows both teams to kind of have their chance to really get back into this game. However, it's another late game map. So are we going to be seeing another late game Leoric? Maybe. That's possible. We do have, uh, really quickly, O'Malley Music, thank you for the 2,000 bits. And Blue Goose, thank you for the 500 bits. Very much appreciated. And Lake Fu for 30 bits as well. But I think we are ready to go. We are going to get into game number two. We are going to head into Tomb of the Spider Queen. I'm going to push all the buttons and uh, we'll make our way in to her clutch. Tomb of the Spider Queen, as you said, a lot of good heroes here. But the thing that I'm considering, and I know this is, you know, more of a heroes of fitness thing in general, but like, can we talk about Cho'Gall? Can we talk about how this is a good map for him? We could see it. Come on, Paradox. We or could see a Cho'Gall. I mean, I don't know if either of these teams goes for it, but at the same time, I know Trixler and I know Turk like mm -hmm. to do wild stuff. And yes. so that is a possibility at any point is to bring out. There's a Leor target ban, though, by the way. But uh, yeah, I mean, at any point, we could see it happen. We could see the Cho'Gall. <laughs> I'd be curious to see what builds we go, though, because last season we saw Cho'Gall three times with three different builds. I, I can see the draft chat, and I just want to update you this. And before they ban out the Leoric, Trick just go. Trick just goes. This is for you, Turk. Bans the Leoric, and then says smooch. Just I love the camaraderie between these players. It's just oh, I love it so much. But Urel will be banned out. They're gonna get rid of the uh, the Liam special, and uh, we'll have to see them what they're gonna be on right there. Is that also will be a Malganus to be banned on the left hand side? Yeah, the, again, I mean, if you haven't seen Russ's Malganus, then uh, you're in for a treat when it finally doesn't get banned because he plays a very, very strong Malganus. Uh, it's, I mean, we saw Leon's in the past and it was great, uh, but Russ, I mean, is something else sometimes on that Malganus. So uh, I, I still am excited to see either Russ get that Malganus or Garrosh, but this is a map that has a very heavy priority on Joanna. So with Lil Ru Ruby's having that first pick, I'd be curious if they do go with Joanna just because she's so good on this map. And it takes away from Russ. I actually really agree with that. I love the idea of the Joanna. The the wave clear from them is really good. Setup is strong. It's We've seen it just be a strong anchor across the board. So yeah, I would say grab that Joanna, get yourself a nice safe tank, and they could just play a control comp here. They don't, they don't need to be massively aggressive. They could just make rotations, push the waves, and realistically go for just a team that sieges better and clears faster, and they can outplay them within the rotations. Obviously, the enemy team could pick up on that and then decide like, all right, cool. Like we have to play into more of the wave clear, but I've seen teams where they, they exploit the fact that the enemy team has less of a wave clear than them. And they just constantly out rotate them. They don't take fights. They just pick up gems. They turn them when they can and they mm -hmm. push respectively. Like it's, it's, it's a really good, it's a really good tactic, but a lot of teams, you know, and here's the storm. They say, this is we're five V five. We're pushing face. We want to, we want to brawl out, but either way, let's get into some of the synergies here. Cause ETC Jaina really great synergy mosh pit. Uh, Ring of Frost, even 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 Mosh Pit with a Water Elemental is great as well. Decker Kane will be grabbed on the left hand side. We've talked about Lake Fu's uh, skill on this on this hero, so I'm really excited to see this pop up for them in this game number two on Tomb. And last pick wise, they're actually going to go for the Orphea for themselves. A lot of Orphea priority in our uh, in our CCL season two here. Oh yeah, I mean she did just get a lot of buffs. I mean True. the all three of her builds just received a buff. And so we used to see her using the E build and then they removed Fright, which is a level four town that allowed it to slow on the pass. Yes. They just made that baseline. So now you can go E build again, but because they made that baseline, it also makes the other two builds good as well. And they made Q a little bit more forgiving if you go Q build and you miss a single Q. So uh, Orphea is really strong right now. We do see Malthale and Deathwing being banned. Probably the Deathwing is a, as an answer because the Malthale got banned, but uh, Either way, I mean, we have seen the Turk play Deathwing on this map and be mm -hmm. very good with it. So we'll see what they end up choosing to go with. I would like to see a Rhaegar personally. Uh, with ETC and Jaina, it's a pretty cool option and it gives Coffee some more ideas of what to run if they go with it. But we do see the oh, Anduin and I mean, Kyberry's Anduin's been, people have been telling me on Twitter to check it out, right? I've literally gotten at like, just someone at me on yeah. Twitter and said, check out Kai Berry's Anduin. And I was like, all right, send me a replay. And a bunch of people were commenting like, they're like, it's good. So I'm excited to see it this game. 
I've I've played with said Anduin, and it is very. I can, as someone who lived and is a potato tank, definitely a very very strong Anduin player. Last two picks though coming out, we do get a Chen, so keg W's in chat, and we have a Sylvanas once again for Kagiri. Uh, Chen is actually in the in-house leagues that are on this channel. Um, when we had season one of in-house leagues, there was actually a decent amount of uh, Chen play from Liam, but on Dragonshire and where they would go wandering keg and actually control the point and just sit there and bump them off the point with wandering keg, control it, drink through the pain, and then someone would cap the dragon and then they'd be, they just dip out by kicking to a minion in the lane. So I really, really like this Chen. I'm excited to see how this works out for them, but a blaze coming through, not a, not a very popular hero, but a very strong hero, especially within this composition. It, it really is. I mean, Blaze has a lot of benefits that you can bring, especially with Bunker. You can kind of answer a lot of different combos that people are trying to go with. Um, and it just gives your team an out. And because of the, the small size of the hallways on this map, right? The hallways mm -hmm. around where the turn-ins are, uh, Blaze's Bunker can actually block out a lot of areas where your team can walk through because they can hop in the, the bunker and then hop on the other side, and the opposing team can't which allows them a lot of different abilities through there. And I mean, I'm always a fan of combustion, so I don't mind ever seeing I, I, I literally was peeking at chat and I saw someone, I think, you know, Turkey should go combustion, put a cap at the end of it. I'm like, no cap, I want the combustion. This is a map for it, I think. You were saying that there's a lot of these corridors where people kind of group up and they end up fighting. This is exactly where you want combustion. This is where I actually see combustion competitively most of the time. And <laughs> either way, we are here on Tomb, game number two. We have got on the left-hand side, we got Little Rubies, we got Lake Fu on the Deckard Cane, we got Trixler on the Joanna, not Kagiri's on the Sylvanas, we've got Vesper on the Chen, and Lashes on the Orphea. I actually thought I was on the wrong team because this is almost the same draft as the last game. <laughs> Right on the right side, red team, we have uh, not suitable for work from home uh, with Russ playing ETC, Selenity playing Jaina. We've got Kyberries on Anduin. We've got the Turk playing Blaze and we've got Coffee playing Greymane. All right, we're 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 down in mid lane. We can go ahead and check out our level ones and see what we have for that as well as uh, we can go ahead and see what our first engagement looks like. I don't think anyone's gonna try and start anything just yet. Oh, there we go. We have Trixler stepping in. Gonna grab the regeneration globe and they're gonna back out. Yeah, and it's, I mean, th this beginning is always tricky on this map because both teams do want to control that that top mid rotation, but at the same time, it's like, you don't really want to die in that first engage and you need to find a way to get some sort of advantage so you're both not just grabbing the, the mid soak and grabbing top soak and then alternating and deciding how you want to do it. It's like, you need to find some way to get ahead in one way or another. And it's usually Joanna just pressuring a little bit more, clearing faster, and the other team not able to. But we have an ETC and a Jaina that can also cover the soak just as fast as that Joanna. So that's where you need to kind of adjust from there. So it's going to be exciting to see how these teams go, but the early portion of this game is generally a little slower as we're waiting to build up on all of these gems for both of these teams. Yeah, the big thing is to check out, is to get your gems as quickly as possible. We should see a rotation actually. Look at Greymane right now. They're playing to the far side of the bottom lane. That's a really, really strong point to make because of the fact that they didn't get seen by Chen. And as long as the team, if they don't call this out, that's that's an easy invade onto this camp in bottom lane from Greymane and Vesper not, might not realize it because they're constantly pushing Turk back down here. But as you said, it's consistent rotations. I want to quickly note at some of the level ones we do have Proc Rock for the ETC with five out of the 20 stacks already. We have Fingers of Frost for the Jaina at level one as well with five out of the 20 stacks for that one. Um, we actually do have Overwhelming Affliction for the uh, Savannah, so no stacks for them or Might of the Banshee Queen and the uh, the Joanna Diggle Laws of Hope at level one. Just, just a couple things to note. Oh, actually, I know there's a lot of Anduin players out there. Renew was picked at level one for them as well. Yeah, it, it could be, uh, I, I mean, I always, I, I had to pull out a calculator one time when I was talking about bold strategy versus Renew, and it's an interesting one. Renew is definitely a strong pick right now. We also do see that moral compass so she can trigger Renew from a further distance, and they did buff the level 13 speed of the Pious for Anduin, so a full W build is actually even stronger than it was in the past because you can actually get a lower cooldown on your W now, uh, as low as, uh, I believe, four seconds if you hit everyone, including yourself, Dear which Lord. would be very difficult to not hit yourself with W. I, I would really like to see how that could happen, but um, but yeah, it, it can get really crazy, so um, Anduin is in a pretty good spot, and I'm still... 
I'm still ready to see what Kai Berries does once she gets level 10 with that. So this is going to be Trickster continuing to make a rotation down into mid lane. They're going to get a slow onto a couple members with the punish. There's a whole lot of gems sitting on the ground as Rust takes quite a bit of damage. Kagiri going to dump that into them and they'll just continue to make those rotations, making sure they're picking up the gems. Only four gems necessary on the side of Little Rubies. And we've got Not Safe for Work. Work from home going to be sitting. They need about four more if my caster math serves me correct. Uh, yeah, I mean, caster math is one of those things that you just can never blame us for, because the second that the stream turns on, we lose all functionality. You guys wouldn't believe that I actually have, um, a lot of things and statistics anyways, but nope, all gone. Once you turn on that stream, it's all gone. So, same thing here, uh, but we are closing in. Both teams do have, both of their, their gems are closing in. We've got, uh, only seven needed on the left side, and they've got 20. On the right side, they only need that 14, and they've got 23. So, either team can turn in. Now, the... Biggest thing to note about this map is when you turn in, you need to make sure that you're pushing out the lanes so that your team has the least amount of decay. And if the opposing team turns in, you also need to push out the lanes so that they have the most decay uh, because these will decay in health mm -hmm. the further they have to travel. And so that means that they could lose half their health before they even reach any of your structures. Then the secondary thing that you should be trying to look for is getting a camp so that if you get a turn in, your camp enhances your turn in. And if they get an, a turn in, then your camp will mitigate their turn in. So both of those things are strategies that both these teams should be looking for at these turn ins. Well, they have the waves coming in here, just doing their best to throw out a little damage and push these back. Kai going to get a couple more gems. Well, they make the rotation down into mid lane. Selenity dumps a little bit of snow on top of the front gate. I think they're going to back off here. This, is, this isn't going to be too aggressive of a web weaver push. Actually, they might double back into top lane now that that's just now crashing to the front gate. Top lane is often where we see teams prioritize the uh, the web weaver phase due to the fact that boss is up in that lane a little bit later, uh, or at least prioritize later in the lane. But that's going to be a double root coming out from Deckard. Power slide from ETC. That's a huge leap of faith from Kai Berries. Going to throw the Divine Star out, get a little healing out from them. They tap well, but turn in availability will be here on the side of Little Rubies. Not Kagiri and friends just making sure that they don't lose their well for top. Yeah, and this is exactly what I was talking about, right? You you get, you, the enemy wins the objective, but you still have all of your resources to grab the objective whenever you want to. And it makes to where Little Rubies is actually still ahead in experience, even though they lost that first objective. Trickster's getting rather low, though. So is Rust. Rust could be taken out at any moment. Trickster gets taken out, though. And now, I mean, even losing Trickster, they're still ahead in experience. It's just the power of getting that soak. I mean, if we were to pull this up as far as the experience difference, uh, they have 2,000 more experience as far as the just Ooh. minions goes. Jet Propulsion from the Blaze coming out. Web Weavers do descend. No 10 talents here just yet, so playing this on even, even sides. No, no, no kind of big power spike. Joanna is going to make their way back towards this. Mid lane should be cleared out, and then they can make a quick rotation to top. Blaze is already in bottom lane, but Turk might get collapsed on by the rest of the team. They're going to get kicked forward. The slows are going to be there, and that'll be a kill in favor for the members of Little Rubies as they just say, you know what, we're all down here. We got Sylvanas. Let's select on the tower and potentially open up bottom lane as Screaming clears out top. Yeah, and I mean, this is really just, both teams are playing safe. This is what you talked about, right? Like, sometimes you just play the control matchup. You just play safe, you sit back, and you make sure that your team is in the best position. You kind of just wait for mistakes, and you win off of just getting value off this objective. Some of the ults we do see picked up. We do see that keg, and we see keg being used right now on Greymane, trying to get Greymane into a bad position, but he positioned really well, so he should be able to get out of this unless Liam goes for the risky play, which he does, and it pays off. It's a lot of gems to lose, too. Like, what? We're looking somewhere in the, like, 10, 10 to, like, yeah, 15 I think, range, I think? I think? About, yeah, I saw, I saw the big gem, which is 5, and then I think I saw 6 of the... Oh, okay, so just, 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 just 11 on them. So, yeah, I think no, so. That's, not not a whole ton, but still, I mean, it's it, you're still removing some from the bank account of uh, not safe for work from home. And they'll just grab themselves the bruiser camp on the right. Same thing on the left. The uh, siege giants are up and available in the bottom lane. And Vesper goes ahead and turns in 22 out of the 55 they need. They actually had 53 in total, so they actually just need one wave, which Vesper could get unless Turk finds a kill onto them. They're going to actually 
pop the evasion and they're gonna just back off. They had that elusive brawler from level seven to get them a little uh, speed and to get out of there, but Greymane dives out. They're gonna try and get the dark flight and they find it and Chen goes rocketing across our screen. But hey, the nice thing is they turned in and that death allows them to, to have a window where Kagiri can turn in. All they need is Orphea to turn in right now and they only need 10 from her. Power slide, solo mosh, but unfortunately Russ has no team around them. So this is just a dance for Kagiri and Russ. It does get a little tricky sometimes because it's like you can land the best moshes, but you need to be paying attention to your team. And sometimes with ATC, trying to pay attention to the enemy team so you can land that perfect mosh makes to where you kind of hope that your team's there. And this this is purely just a case of, hey, we are a new team that hasn't been playing together too much. Whoa. So, ooh, that's a really good stay while, but a great ring coming out from Salinity just trying to prevent things. And we have an amazing barrel that's going to try to push Coffee all the way back into their keep or into their fort anyways. You can take a lot of damage, but Rust does have a bit of appeal. This is just a wild fight going back and forth in either direction. Both of these tanks are doing a great job of healing for their team. And we do see that combustion being used defensively just to try to scare off Trickster a little bit and get a little bit of a slow out there. Well, let's see what happens here. Um, we're going to get the turn in on the side of Little Rubies. We didn't check out their comms last time, so now that they have this, let's jump into Little Rubies comms. Cut out again. Coffee's not there. All good. I'm on the way. I can maybe get a keg on somebody. We lost lashes, by the way, and my arrow's down. That's okay. We'll get the weapon pushing in. I'm gonna go Kyber's. Yep. Okay. We're here. We got you. Here's our own. Kyber's, Kyber's. Trust, 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 trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyber's Oh, and Kyber's. Kyber's. Watch out for that huge. Yep. Blaze behind us. Blaze behind Let's us. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Uh, they have a I'm lot. Stuck. Okay. Just, just yeah, get out. pushing. Yeah. We're just focusing on too many heroes. Yeah, I feel like we should be able to kill. Cool. A really, really interesting turn of events. I actually thought that they were going to be able to get a lot of value from this Will Beaver phase, but that's not the case, Paradox. It really wasn't. And, and again, both of these teams are having kind of a similar issue, which is that they just have this this familiarity problem right they're they're not familiar with how each other plays and they're not really following up the same targets they're going for two oh, different yeah. targets were called that was a great barrel they kept oh, two different absolutely. targets out but unfortunately they picked two different targets both of them stayed healthy enough to survive and they were both able to get out despite an incredible play coming out from liam and so once these, I mean, this is the greatest part about this particular game is we get to watch these teams grow. And this is just week one of that growth. Because they're definitely going to need to improve. I mean, honestly, yeah. they, they yeah. need to work with each other a little bit more. We saw them practicing a little bit on stream over the last week or so. Mm -hmm. But they just, I, I it's going to, I mean, two or three weeks of them playing together, especially against these other competitive teams, is really, really going to help out. Because, uh, I mean, a little bit more coordination in either one of these teams would have five to six more kills than they have right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like it, it's 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 little things that they'll grow and it, they'll figure each other out, you know, like who's going to be calling targets and then just looking for said targets because we were in the comms and, and I was I was watching. I was like, Kai Berries, they, they kicked in. Chen was sitting there, drank a little bit and then got the wandering keg right in the corner. And it wasn't until a couple seconds later, they were like, oh, Kai Berries, Kai Berries. And it's just like, all right, so it's a little bit of a split in comms. They actually are going to be trying to split Russ. Actually, no, they're trying to get Selenity away from the team. This is going to be the eternal feast out from the Orphe as well. Selenity being targeted. Mosh pick comes out from the ETC onto one. There's a ring of frost underneath them as well and that'll be the chen going down for the gray main one for one trade stay well and listen actually interrupted if i if i see that correct um yeah it was it's on a five second cooldown they dropped the scroll of ceiling lake food trying to make it out and i don't know Ooh, this this team fight's going very sideways turk has no mana whatsoever so jet propulsion might not even be in the question it's really not. I mean, he the, the thing is, is that has a 65 mana cost, so it, it's going to be something that you can always get up to rather quickly. Uh, I mean, a single globe will get you up to doing it, but that was a really good job for Russ, making sure that that peel worked. But these fights are certainly chaotic. It's going to take either one of these teams to really um, change up their strategy because either one of these teams, after level 16 and 20, once these towns come out, it could be a coin flip. And you don't ever want it to be a coin flip. You always want to make sure that your team has an advantage for one of these fights. And neither team has an advantage. Both of these team fights turn into absolute chaos right as they happen. We have 16 right around the corner, but also right around the corner is going to be 31 gems dropped by Turk. Oh, no. I mean, they have enough for a turn in. Russ is going to get the five that they need, but that's 31 
gone. That's that that's almost back to back turn ins. Not even a, a not even an option. But this red web weaver will buy some time. They've actually got top lane pushed in quite a bit. Bottom lane's pushed out. Mid lane just got cleared. These web weavers, I don't feel like they're gonna get much value here. Paradox. And they, they probably won't. And that's the big problem is the number one thing that you need to always know about these web weavers is watching that decay. Um, mm -hmm. And if you push against the, a web weaver, which is exactly what Little Rubies did, they made sure that all the waves were pushed out. These web weavers aren't going to get anything done. And it costs a lot of resources to win a web weaver. I mean, you have to build up anywhere from 50 to up to 70 gems at any point to be able to get a web weaver. And having that be useless is always bad. We do see Russ going in for a slide to make sure that light bomb works. Um, and a great route coming out from Kyberries. But we do just have that unstoppable from that keg that you can always use to just get out. The, the ruby value right there from Lake Fu because they threw the Haraja cube. Unfortunately, Lake Fu stepped up to throw that Haraja cube. They're going to go down. Not enough to share from Chen will be a uh, not. Oh my God, the mosh pit comes out. Coffee's going to step forward. That's a dance on the Chen. They find the kill. And this is actually, you know what? I, I want to talk about this real quickly as they're pushing it through bottom lane. I see this in so many games. You don't need to look for a, the, the epic YouTube five man mosh. You don't need that. Single target mosh as well. It is a two minute cooldown. If you solidify a kill, that's huge. I mean, Chen just got staggered out. That means there's only three defending. That's definitely worth the two minute cooldown as they get a keep front gate, a fort, a whole lot more value than I was expecting out of this Webweaver phase. Oh yeah, I mean, I think solo moshes are very underrated, especially since, again, the later the game gets, death timers get up to be a minute. So mm -hmm. you use a two minute cooldown to make it to where you get to do whatever you want to for an entire minute. And that's exactly what's happening. They're just taking whatever they want to. Kavi's getting rather low though. Uh, Kyberries does get that last minute heal. A lot of people are getting rooted, but nobody's there to follow up that route because they just keep staggering kills, all because of that one mosh that was done just about a minute ago. Wandering Keg, Leap of Faith, stay a while and listen. Quite a few things being used here. The Ring of Frost goes underneath all of it. Vesper getting very low. That's a very low Decker Cane who gets picked off. They throw the scroll ceiling down. Kagiri going to be able to get to the far side of the keep, but the Retreat Ping going to be coming out. Russ says, no, no, no. We have only a Sylvanas and Chen against us. We get a keep here. And they step back up and they're going to go for that bottom. And, and this is a good position to be in if you are not suitable for work from home because you can all back if you want to or this is one of my favorite times to set up an ambush. You find a location where they need to go and you just charge in from another direction but instead they're going to take the value route. Uh, two people are still dead, let's just take a fort really quick. And then we can decide whether we want to back, ambush, or go for boss. All of those are options that they can take at really any point here. Gems need to be built back up on both sides. Quite a few for the members of Little Ruby is not safe for work from home are going to be sitting at 37. So if my math serves me correct, they need actually it's changing, but they need roughly 27 as I currently look at it for their next turn. And nope, they need 17. Already the math is is, is treating us good this evening, um, which isn't that many rotations for them. And they also need 20 talent here. Well, they don't really need it, but they're probably going to be looking for it. So within these rotations till 20, they should get enough gems for a turn in. And we should be seeing some red web weavers descend in favor for not safe for work fairly soon. Blessed Shield is going to be coming out. There's the Condemned to pull them in. Light Bomb will be coming out as well. There's a lot of damage onto three of these players. Russ is going to be low. They find the ETC and when Ring of Frost comes out onto two. Wandering Keg is very split because they're so low. They find the counter kill onto the Orphea. Trixler in the back line finds the kill onto Jaina. And that's going to be a one for three, but they're still pressing into this. Turk is trying to get out of here. I don't think you're going to make it. Coffee, the only one left alive. Shield Glare comes out. Haraja Q for the slow. And my God, Paradox, was that the turnaround they needed? And it all came off from Trixler's Bless Shield. It was an amazing call out, most likely from him getting that Bless Shield and then immediately following up with a Deckard Root into another Deckard Root that was able to peel off the both the Jaina and the Greyman that tried to come back after that, that initial engage, was able to peel those off. So it's just a lot of teamwork. They're finally finding some cohesiveness. They were able to get those four kills. They immediately went to boss. They're not on a turn in yet, so it will just be a boss. But I mean, a boss is a boss, especially in this late game. It will be very valuable. Yeah, I think Coffee's just going to try and turn in the 19 they have. Um, they're just they're expecting that the enemy team's on boss and they're going to be safe down here. They themselves don't have that kind of vision, but the wave ahead took out the keep. This is 20s up on both sides. We do have couple of those new heroics coming in. I'm just skimming through to see what we got. Anything interesting. Purifying Brew for the Chen, actually. No upgrade on Wandering Keg for the armor from them. 
and uh, the upgrade for the Blessed Shield. There's, there's just a lot of good upgrades here. Um, Torbus, yeah, Torbus for the ETC as well. So gonna be uh, potentially going for a missed Mosh and then you know go for the Juke Power Slide onto like two, three members. I've seen, I've seen exactly that happen where an ETC moshes. They wait like one to two seconds. Everyone's like, oh, whatever. And then they Power Slide and just get that Torbus value right on top of them. Boss gets cleared out, back into rotations, but they're not too far off from the turn in on the side of Little Rubies. Yeah, it, honestly, I, I do like Torbus. It's a it's an interesting one. Usually, I draft it into teams that don't have a lot of interrupts for Mosh, just because it's like you get to Mosh their front line and then just immediately Mosh their back line, mm -hmm. um, and it's just really powerful. But uh, I mean, in this one, he must see. I mean, he's been getting really good moshes, so honestly, it could just be something where he's like, I'm just going to go for a solo mosh, which has been working, and if they try to defend against the solo mosh, I'm just going to mosh the rest of their team, so I like that. They do get seen, um, but man, it's it's getting close. I do want to point out, we did have a wise, uh, Wizen or Wizen Duelist, and it is 17 out of 30, which is pretty good, mm -hmm. seeing as that's something that you lose half of it on death whenever you die, so you must have had it stacked uh, before that previous death. Absolutely. I uh, quickly want to note, Evil Grin, thank you for the 18 months of subscription. Thank you, uh, Swing, for the Twitch Prime as well as Emote Control. Thank you for the 500 bits. It is very much appreciated, my friend. Thank you for all the support bringing towards the tables. Turk tries to go for the Jet Propulsion, isn't able to connect onto anyone right there. Blue Web Weavers descend on the side. Oh my god, no way! They find the pop onto Trixler. Combustion Light Bomb was there in case they could. They needed more damage. They really wanted that counter kill. Are they going to be able to turn this around and just end game off of an aggressive Web Weaver phase? I mean, this is the tricky part. I mean, they they got the Joanna down, but they still have every single ultimate available for Little Rubies. So despite being down that, they also uh, did use this Web Weaver, so that Web Weaver has to be dealt with. The, <laughs> the great part about not suitable for work from home right here is the position that they're in. They they wasted that that turn in, which is exactly what happened to them earlier, which is a wasted turn in. So now they've removed all of those gems and made it more difficult for Little Rubies to get another turn in. But I don't think they're going to be able to do anything major with taking out that Joanna. At the same time, they only used three ults to do it, and they almost have two of those back. Uh, sorry, they have one of those back, and they almost have the second one back, and they're closing it. I mean, 30 seconds from having all of their ults back. So they didn't really use a lot to pretty much nullify 60 gems. That's, that is a rough go. Like, I, I've seen teams, you know, they, they turn in for these late game web weavers, and I, I like to call these defensive turn ins, where it's just, it's buying you some time. Trick is back up, so. I think they, they were they were looking to get a lot more value, but that just turned into a defensive web we were pushed. And the unfortunate factor, during all of that, they were able to find more gems. That'll be a third turn in, if I'm not mistaken, for the members of Not Safe for Work from Home. So let's see what they're able to get with this 20 minutes into the game. These are going to be crashing just about into the mid lane or midway through each of these lanes. Turk trying to push up top lane a little bit further. Actually, they're going to go way further up than that because on Tomb of Spider Queen, they descend as far up as the enemy minion wave is, mm -hmm. you know, basically until it crashes into an enemy minion or structure. Whereas on Garden of Terror, it only spawns up as far as your minion wave. So just slight differences on that one right there. Um, so if you're missing a mini wave in lane, it, it, it's not going to spawn near core. This is a whole big fight. <laughs> Eternal Feast comes out, Power Slide, Moshpit comes out. That's going to be the tour bus. Wandering Keg going to be knocking them around. Anduin will be the only one down thus far. They do find the Orphea counter kill. So one for one. That's going to be a Ring of Frost connecting onto two. Salinity trying to find the burst. There's a scoreless ceiling from Lake Boo. They find the Jet Propulsion around the corner. They get a triple kill overall for the one kill of their own. Web Weaver through bottom lane looks like that's going to be the goal to try and end game with this as Russ just stops the drinking from Chen. Yeah, I mean, he also uh, interrupted the stay a while, and we have to look at Lake Fu. She went respect the elderly, so if that wasn't interrupted, that would have been the completely different team fight right there. And so that's looking like this is going to be game, but we do have Liam just doing his best to try to hold this, but it is looking like it's going to be G, G in favor of not suitable for work from home, uh, giving them a 2-0 lead in this, which is awesome because, I mean, they looked like they were having a rough time at the beginning of that game one, and out of nowhere, they come back, and now they are just dominating uh, by the end of that uh, game one, and they held strong this entire game. They had seven more takedowns in the opposing team. They held strong as far as the structures and objectives that they needed to do. They just played that really well. It was such a fun series to watch. And I feel like part of not safe for work from homes 
style at this point is very much into the late game. Like they like that 16 to 20 range and they like that power. They, I think they like to play around the long death timers and the, the, the kind of all in fights. Cause a lot of these late fights seem like that. They were very all in, like even when they were losing the fight overall, uh, on the side of not safe for work and little Ruby's got that turned in. There was, there's a couple people, you know, there's almost the entire team wipe. I think Grayman was the only one to get away a, a, a lot or get away alive. Mm -hmm. Even in that team fight, when they lost two initial players, they didn't just back off and be like, okay, we lost two. Like, let's, you know, like, like, let's try and save this. No, they just kept going in and they're oh, like, yeah. we can turn this around. We can turn this around. And I kind of like that about them. This is really, really interesting for their storyline, but little rubies, they played an insanely good game too. Like let's not count out the fact that Lake Fu had 67,000 uh, healing compared to the annual 56. Like not to say like, oh, they're just better and they should have won. But like, that's a significant amount of healing to all of those players. It is. And I mean, she was, again, a split second from locking down ETC and the entire team, giving them a two second blind when they woke up and a two second silence when they uh, woke up. So uh, both of those things would have completely changed that fight. They were off by about half a second. Um, and and that again, that came down to Russ landing that amazing knockback that was able to interrupt that. Uh, so. This is, I mean, these teams are so close that it could really go either way. I'd love to see um, Lil Ruby's practice a little bit more together because we saw so many opportunities that Liam set up for the team that just couldn't be followed up. So I can't wait to see them later in the weeks when they get a little bit more time to practice together because I think they're going to be a team that's going to come back. Well, while we wait to find out who's going to be joining us for this interview, I, I just got to say this was such a fun game. Like... Mm -hmm. I, I, me personally, as, as, as I, you know, when I cast tons of games, I'm always just like, I want that game three. Like, I absolutely want mm -hmm. that. Um, apparently it's going to be Turk, but they, uh, immediately just got up to go <laughs> like to, they, they were like, I gotta, I gotta BRB for a second after the game. Um, I'm just going to ask if the secondary. All yeah, right, I mean, uh, they, they have a secondary person, so I'm just okay. going to double check if they're cool with coming in. Then we'll, we'll grab that secondary <clears throat> uh, and then that'll work out perfectly. Um, OK, cool. Yeah, I'm going to grab them and I'll pull them into our chat right now. So um, welcome, Kyberries. We just ripped you out of your own chat. How are you feeling after that 2-0 series? Kyberries. I forgot Kai I have the talk button, uh, but I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's, it, it it looked so casual. Easy 2-0? Uh, like, no, what's the sweater? What? That was, nothing about that was easy. So we, we, we've got tons of questions, as always. Let's talk about game number one. Okay. We jumped into your comms right before that 20. You know, you're all, like, Turk was just like, we just got to get 20s. We just got to get 20s. Was that the mantra of, of the, um... Was it the mantra of the of the game? Was it just that moment? Yeah, like, can, no, you, can you talk a little bit about of that? The entire game. Turk was literally saying from draft, guys, I just got to get twenty, and then I'm gonna kill their whole team. Uh, so we were consistently giving up objectives and giving up fights, and Turk was just like, don't worry about it. We just we just got to get twenty in that way that Turk does. And uh, <laughs> uh, there were some times where we were a little nervous, and we were kind of like, ha ha, you know, just get twenty, ha ha. But it actually. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, we just got 20 uh, and then clapped. I, I, it, it worked really well. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. Parad yeah, Parad Paradox? <laughs> no, I mean, I, it, re it really did. I mean, that's been the one thing that I've always said about that Leoric build is I was like, man, it sucks because you, you have to lose a lot of objectives to finally get value. But if you do get it, you're good. And one thing that I liked that you guys did was you guys always took trades. That you, They're going to win that objective. Let's double soak, grab some cams. Um, but... I mean, when you guys were thinking about this draft, you grabbed that Deckard rather quickly in that first game. Was that just to take it away? Or did you really... Because I, I have seen you play a lot of Deckard. I was watching uh, right after Ruby got that change and you were playing a lot of Deckard with Vipey. And um, do you really like Deckard? Or was it just kind of like in the back of your mind that, okay, I can play Deckard well and I also want to take it away from Lake Fu? What was your goal with that? Well, it was a little bit of both. Uh, we know Lake Fu plays... I mean, Lake Fu, Lake Fu and I are practically the same human. We play all the same heroes. So... We knew that Lake Fu wanted Deckard. Deckard is also really strong right now. Um, he's also kind of a pain to play against with like stay a while and the sustain healing. So we kind of just didn't want them to have it. And also I enjoy having it. So a little mm -hmm. both. 
Were there any concerns? Uh, I, I'll I'll just ask this question oh, then, you're, you're uh, and then we can go. But were there any concerns? I mean, you saw the the Garrosh and the Zarya knew that Garrosh is going to be speeding towards your team. Were there any concerns? Certain things you guys said Hello. Uh, that hey, if this happens or if this happens, we we just need to do this. I mean, what what were your your plans after seeing their draft in that first game? Um, the, well, the big concerns we we banned out, like uh, Turk was like, I'm not playing against uh, Urel. We're not playing against Malthale. So we make sure we make sure we, that we got to establish that is in. That's true. Oh, look, there he is. Hello. <laughs> we just invaded. Oh, no, that's good. That's, that's good. Yeah, no, just Wraith walked right in here. Right. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those drafts were based off of Turk's uh, Christmas wish list, though. So. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I do want I do want to ask this. Were you disappointed that there was Vikings? Since we do have you, you know, kind of just jumping in here, were you disappointed that the Vikings ban game one? Were you gonna play it? Uh I mean, I expected it, honestly. They're oh. uh they're my friends, but you know, they do have tiny balls. So it is <laughs> uh you can see that from the second game, the Auric ban as well, just raw dog, first oh. ban. Who bans that <laughs> in the current year? Uh unlucky, really. I wanted to give the crowd the TLV that they want and need. I was not allowed. Let the record show. That is all. Well, hopefully we'll get it in future weeks from you. Um since since we got all three of you in here, why don't we just kind of run it down? I know I know coffee's been muted. Uh any shout outs that you'd like to give? The the floor is all yours. I was I was just here to listen. I was just, okay. uh, all right. yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for yeah, thanks for having us back for ccl this is there's something really special i think about this event in particular and it brings us all together and i don't know i just feel i feel like part of the family and i'm feeling the love tonight i really am so thanks guys kai uh well i guess first i'd like to shout out you baja for all the we know all the work you're doing behind the scenes putting in hours lifting weights right so thank you for putting in so much time and effort and heart into making this a wonderful tournament experience. Thank and you. then uh, thanks thanks to Russ, who was our shot caller, drafter, generally just put us all on his shoulders and, and carried us to victory. I love being bossed around, and that man does it. Well. <laughs> yeah, it's really right. a good feeling. It really is. Oh, yeah. All righty. And then, uh, Turk, do you have any shout outs? Yeah. Um... Hang on, one second. Oh, I, is there a list? Is there a PDF? That you no, 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 no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, shout out to my team, man. This this four man was not as difficult as the last one. God bless. Oh uh, boy. The fact that you guys didn't put me in with Moon this time. Holy God, <laughs> I could kiss whoever's in charge of that. Whatever random number generator you guys are working with. D twenties, whatever. Wait, sir. Um, sir, love this I... team. Love it. Love what you guys did with the place. Sir, 10 out of 10. Win, we're going to be a back to back champion, like you and I together. That's we're right. Gonna... Coffee. Yes. Are we going to do course. it twice? Yes. Yes. I mean, more me than you, but yes, we are together as well as a unit. What? More you. But also me. So. Okay. Yeah. Listen, listen. Shout outs extra to Trix Chat once again uh, for having the losers POV. I mean, that's unlucky. Uh, oh. It is what it is, though. It is a tradition. That we have on CCL. Thank you for the season two, by the way. Appreciate what what, what work you guys do. Uh, putting this together. Thank you to our sponsors as well. Duped.gg. That's it. That's my shout outs. Thank you so much, Turk, Coffee, and Kyberries for the interview. Congratulations on your victory Thank for you. week one. And we'll see you all next week for another best of three series. Have a nice next games. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy whatever yeah. practice or whatever you do. Good night. Get out of here. I, I throw you out of our chat. <laughs> Just gonna put Turk down there. Alrighty, everybody. That is going to be game one for us, but we're not done just yet, Paradox. We are not. So there will be another game coming soon. So we will be back in just a little bit. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one, guys. We have uh, two, again, very solid teams, and we will see them very, very soon. So don't go anywhere. We will be back in just a few minutes.